Welcome back to the MSU Federal Credit Union Coaches Show. There is a lot of significance behind Stephen Izzo's name, and the majority of it has to do with the year 2000. Not only was it the year he was born, but the year Tom Izzo won his first and only national championship. The player he built the strongest bond with on the team was point guard Mateen Cleaves. It's why Stephen's middle name is Mateen, and it's one way his dad is able to show him how much he means to him. The other was making him a walk-on in the summer of 2019, and as you'll hear, it continues to be one of the best decisions Izzo has ever made. You know, I really do enjoy it. Um, I mean, he doesn't treat me good, you know, because he's still 22 years old or one years old, you know, and so he's still in that stage. But it's got to be tough on him, too. How would you like to go down to the locker room after you've just chewed your team out and probably every player is swearing at the coach and mad at the coach? <laughs> you got to sit there as the coach's son. The good news is Steven's probably jumping right in with him, you know, but what I've enjoyed is. Uh, there's something about coming to practice every day and knowing I get to see my son for a couple hours. You know, even if he's not doing much or if he's doing this or that, there's something about going on a trip and seeing him get on the bus. There's something about our tradition that we take a picture at half court every arena we, we go to. That night before the shoot around, we, we take a picture. And uh, I used to think I first time it happened was Madison Square Garden. There were some stars around that I said, come on, he'll get in here and, and you know, just former players or Jay Billis or who Bill Raftery was there. And so we took a picture. So then the next place we went, he goes, oh, we're taking a picture? No. <laughs> I thought he thought it was stupid, but I, I think he's closet version of him is saying, that's pretty neat, you know. There was a rule between me and him. What goes on in the locker room and in the hotel stays in the locker room and the hotel. You know, in four years, Sometimes I wish he'd tell me more and he doesn't. <laughs> so you made the pact. <laughs> I made the, the deal and he abided by it. Every other deal he doesn't abide by. And then maybe that's the one I could use some help once in a while. I really respect that about him. But I respect about our players. I don't think they treat him any different saying, oh, I'd probably go tell his dad, you know. And they've embraced them and uh, I'll be grateful for the rest of my life for that. Seems like this year too, he's been a little bit more adamant about getting to you when you start to get in some hairy situations with the refs. <laughs> he's getting cocky. He's getting more experienced. Um, I know he doesn't want to be a coach, so it's not that he wants to learn how to do that, but he does kind of, every once in a while, I feel someone pulling at me and I say, get off me, and I turn around, it's him, you know? But it's, uh, it's all good. I mean, it really is. I. I I hope everybody, I, you know, I hope someday you get the experience at uh, your job. I think whenever you can uh, bring your kid around your job and uh, have him appreciate the good times, but understand the bad times, maybe he understands why some days I used to come home different, you know, and uh, it's, it's, it's been all good. I, I can promise you it's been all good. The interview that you recently did with Graham, Ben Singer too, about the whole adoption and Loopy was, you know, in on it and her was part of it and her saying that, you know, she can't imagine what life would be like now without Steven. Yeah, sometimes I want to realize it because, you know, sometimes as I said, but uh, I'm just kidding on that. The, the, there was nothing like that day, you know, it was, magical because it was um, like you didn't know what to expect and uh, but it took about six seconds and I felt no different than I did with Raquel. It, it was really cool and to all the people watching uh, if for one reason or another or just for no reason um, you're thinking about adoption man go for it. it, it, it it's, it's helping somebody else's life but it's also making yours. And then, you know, naming them kind of after Mateen and my two favorite guys in the world are Mariucci and Mateen and that's, so he's got big shoes to fill, you know. Unfortunately, mine aren't part of those shoes, but those two guys will be good shoes to fill. Do you remember too when you first saw him? Because Luby was saying that even at four days old, you know, in the interview that he kind of reached out to her and. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, I remember it. Uh, we had to go to the doctor's house. It was a private adoption. And uh, um, when we went over there, you know, we laughed because we're more dark complected. And Stephen was almost an albino. I mean, his hair was white as your paper. He did. 
He did reach out to her. He didn't reach out to me, but he did reach out to her. It's such a warm feeling. I, I think about it, I get chills because, um, you know, everybody wants, I mean, not everybody, but most people want to have kids and, and you think this isn't the same. It, like I said, it took three seconds. It took him smiling, crying, reaching out, whatever it was, realize it is identical. And uh, that part was pretty cool. Steven has always been a staple of the Spartans program, but as of late, he's really found his niche on the bench. After the break, he explains how his vocal presence is not only felt among his teammates, but the opposition.